Welcome back to the 14th episode of the Sketchbook Heroes with me, Ilias, and my co-host, Robert. We're going to talk about character design and also stereotype norms that are used in games, comics, you know, whatever. We're going to talk you through it. We're probably going to like sort of offend you at some point or yeah. And also we derail like we always do. So enjoy. And now we need the Sketchbook Heroes theme song. Intro go! Skedoosh! Artists of the world unite. Step out of your comfort zone into the danger zone. Are we back? We are back. I never pressed anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. How was your Easter, man? Because was... I know you're very religious and all. <laughs> oh, yes. Very much. <laughs> so uh, how are the chickens? The chickens. Well, it's, it's been good. It's been a good Easter. I am, like, exhausted from doing nothing all weekend. Like, mm -hmm. my body just feels empty of energy, which Moist. is, I don't know. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe a bad thing. I don't know. <laughs> right now, I just feel like... Grrr. That's what I feel like. Nice. Uh, but no, um, my girlfriend went to Rome, oh. so I've had the the apartment to myself for four days now, going on a full more week. So, yeah, I'm not gonna have any energy <laughs> at all. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been really nice just taking time out, watching movies that I haven't seen, trying to get up to date. Uh, went home to the parents, had dinner with my uncle and uh, the kids that maybe some of you guys saw. A little uh, happy Easter greeting <laughs> from the family. I was uh, I was drunk, but that's normally what happens when I go back home. <laughs> Just to cope, to cope with the parents and everything. <laughs> you uh, your parents so, to cope with the parents. <laughs> but I was actually the first one to turn in on because uh, we were there or yeah we were there on the saturday and i was the first one to go to bed which never what? happens yeah i just started feeling really bad like i think i was too drunk but i wasn't that drunk like i could still talk and i was normal but all of a sudden just the color disappeared from my face i started sweating you know I, what this is right yeah i'm old yep <laughs> but everybody I was drinking with are a lot older, yes, but <laughs> which does not explain anything. <laughs> explains everything. <laughs> you but, are uh, old. They handle oldness better. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I went all out. It's, it's been a while since I drank a lot. And this, yeah. Normally. He also sent me a lot of love texts yeah, during like late Saturday or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Spread the love. I don't and remember That's why much. you shouldn't have a phone when you're drunk. <laughs> Mm -hmm. a smartphone when you're drunk <laughs> yeah no but it was actually it was really nice up until that point but it was also good to go like i went to bed maybe one o'clock or something yep and uh, woke up epically hungover of course but no puking or anything like that had some breakfast and then i was fit for fight Sweet. which was good so i just have to not go to bed early enough and i feel hungover <laughs> yeah well yeah <laughs> Getting old. Getting old. That's the curse. So that We're not was... too old for this shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, no, so that's been my weekend. How about you? Uh, I injured myself at the gym on Wednesday, I think. And my neck was like, I can move. So I've been watching Legend of Korra. <laughs> <laughs> like, Which is what you do. <laughs> so it's like four seasons. Fantastic. I've just, just watched it all for the I think third third time I think this was the third time mm -hmm. that I've seen it and from my, start to finish yeah from start mm -hmm. to finish season one because I saw uh, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender f like a while back yep and now I thought like I'm just gonna jump to this one just to get that transition mm -hmm. 
and oh man this show is so much better (laughs) (laughs) Uh, like the animation like they took everything like we said before they Mm. learned and then they just made this super fucking awesome like when they stomp down to the ground and rocks fly up you know for the earth benders and they just punch them away like everything is so well timed so what I decided when I saw the last episode was to rewatch it again. <laughs> so I'm just going for my fourth time. So if you haven't seen the Legend of Korra, just drop whatever the fuck you're doing. It can't be that important. And just watch the show. <laughs> and then tell me what you think on sketchbookheroes.com. Yeah. That was my Easter, by the way. I did family stuff as well. Super uninteresting for all of you. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep it brief. Watch Legend of Korra. <laughs> Happy Some Easter. <laughs> stuff that did happen that we sort of didn't even talk about. But <gasps> Star Wars, the trailer. Star Wars. The new Star Wars. I have not both. seen the new. I did not watch any of them. Uh, I saw so a poster, though. You have uh, The Last Jedi trailer and Battlefront 2 trailer. Did you see the Star Wars Photoshop poster of uh, the girl holding like the old poster where they hold the sword and you have the lens flare in the lightsaber thingy me jig uh no i Are haven't you... seen just the poster it's so ugly really like the idea is good so they're tying it back but to, uh, yeah exactly but origin. it is entirely photoshop and the the drawn girl hmm. uh, ray i'm guessing <laughs> is garbagely done like it's not good like you know for you know you remember the old star wars posters yeah, yeah, yeah. they're so fucking good yeah. You know, like, and this is not. And then they photoshopped The Last Jedi and someone else. I didn't pay attention because I was like, Ugh. Okay. <laughs> uh, like, it's all Photoshop. There's no painting here whatsoever. But they're still sort of emulating. I think we can solve this with a quick little Google. <laughs> yeah, I need to see this. Because I'm guessing... I think someone wrote as a quote to that one. I think it was like... Photoshop much? <laughs> it was like, oh my god, we need the last Jedi poster. There we go. Okay, the alarm. Yeah, I was waiting for Pause. that one. And we're back. Turn the alarm off. <laughs> yeah. Watch the Star Wars poster. Yeah. And now we're both horrified. Yeah, this is really bad. I'm still looking at it. <laughs> like, I like the the idea of it. Yeah, I think sure. I can no, but I But I can approve. totally relate to the colors and the, the sort of... A, but it's so Photoshop. Yeah. And I mean, she's supposed to be holding a lightsaber, but it's just this... Yes. It almost looks like it's an early concept for an Iron Man poster. Like, you know, she's shooting up the light thing with her hand. Or like, has a really big light sword. Yeah. Something. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. I know, like. I know, like. Yeah. yeah, it's very disappointing. Mm. You know, going from Drew Strusan posters to this... <laughs> Yeah, horrible. That's what. I, Even though if, he didn't do the first one, but no, he didn't do the first one. That was oh, Dix. I don't remember his name. Oh yeah, I know, I know. I I should know this because we talked about this just a while back. Um, but I don't remember, so fuck it. Yeah. But yeah, look up just Drew Struzan or any other poster artist that is good. <laughs> yeah, that's what it should have been. <laughs> that's what it should have been. Yeah, mm. or like any. Actually, just Google Star Wars posters. Yeah, and you'll see some really good examples, and then you'll see that one. <laughs> yeah, even the fan ones are better. Oh shit, like, there are some really good mm-hmm. fan ones. And even the the crappy Photoshop ones even look better. Like the composition of those are more intriguing <sighs> to me than this. Yeah, and I also don't like that Luke's face it's is bigger. so big. Yeah, and and then. But it's he's Kylo in Ren. this one. Yes, and then <laughs> Kylo Ren is yeah. like he's sort of so it breaks sort of the composition for him. I don't yeah. know. It doesn't no this it doesn't read well. Uh all the focus goes to that epic lens flare because it just takes oh, so much yeah, yeah, yeah. out of it. Oh um, yeah, okay, let's just yeah. let's drop this. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry we promoted this too much. Yeah. <laughs> That poster does not deserve to be talked about. <sighs> yes. Uh, so yeah. So that yeah. M- moving but, on. But the trailer, I like the trailer, and I haven't seen it actually. I'm actually really hyped for Battlefront Two, like All Star the game. Wars game. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that looks great. And I, haven't actually I think looked at that either. <laughs> they did sort of the Korra thing with this. Mm-hmm. So they listen to the fans, and they're like, "Okay, this was missing from the first game. We're gonna fix that now." So now they have a campaign. Mm. and story mode which is really epic and it takes place between 
uh, the last old movie and uh, Force Awakens. Oh, so that there's is a badass. nice big yeah, chapter yeah. there with this, and you're playing the bad guys, like the yeah. Imperial, cool. apparently, like this rogue super squad. Uh, and Darth Maul is going to be in it. So cool. you're going to be able to play yeah. him and Yoda, I think. And that's pretty much all we know. And Kylo Ren also. So you're going to be able to play Yoda, but you're the bad guys? Or can you be both? No, but it's in, you haven't played Battlefront, the normal game, right? Nah. No. So you have this, have it's, it's called like a hero, something hero. Fuck, I don't remember what it's called. I never played it myself, but you play as the heroes and then you do battle. Oh, like. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now they're introducing uh, Darth Maul, Yoda, and Kylo Ren oh, okay, as okay, these. Okay. As these, yeah, yeah. yeah heroes. It's really cool playing like with Darth Vader in this because you just go around mowing down stormtroopers or uh, rebels, mm -hmm. like throwing your sword away, just chopping them up and force choking and all of this. Really epic. Uh, so looking forward to that. Yeah. Sweet. Stopping the derail right there. Boom. Boom. We're gonna talk character design. Designo, designo, yeah. and there are some key things to keep in mind when doing this. And we're gonna walk you through it, like we said in the beginning. And I have some favorite characters that I love. Like both, sometimes I just love the design, hmm. and sometimes I love the whole concept of them. But we're just gonna talk you through a couple that we like personally, yeah, and why we like them. Yes. And what would be your favorite character, Robert? Uh, off the bat, just because we talked about this earlier, I'd say Batman. Yeah, Batman has a good read, like no yeah. matter yeah. what you do with him. And I think my favorite design is the animated series Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. the boxy, simple, minimalistic style. That is just actually, that guy is brilliant. I don't remember his I name. Don't, no, I don't even know his but name, yeah. I think. No, no, no but, uh, but, but he's worth just, checking out because everything he does, he does very well. Very cool. Yeah. Just the intro of the show, sort of, I love that, you know, uh, and the last shot with the lightning flash and when he's standing on the, the mm. building. It's just so epic. Uh, and, and also that, the that shot intro on, for me is just it's epic. Brilliant. Like it's iconic for my childhood. It's yeah. like Saturdays at ten. <laughs> it's so cool, you know, he's doing the flip lance and then yep. stands up slowly and you see the cave. Yeah, the cave <sighs> sort of yeah. And then yeah, the yeah. wide eyes open up and it's just oh perfect. But yeah, such an iconic character. Uh, unmistakable silhouette, so easily readable. Very relatable if um, you like training and like have lost something, I guess. <laughs> Just the dark past of this character. And, you know, it makes... Uh, for me, he's so iconic because he is... Uh, he's a superhero without any superpowers, which everybody knows. Everybody knows Batman, right? He just has a lot of money. Yeah. And that's his superpower. And his, I guess, intellect. Yeah, yeah he I just guess trained his, his body yeah. and mind to become something more. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's just spontaneously my favorite character right now. Mm -hmm. What about you? Uh, one character that I just love because he's sort of he goes against a lot of uh, the norms is uh, the Kung Fu Panda, like Poe. Poe, because he's so friggin' like he's. He's so round. <laughs> like, he was intentionally created to be friendly. Mm -hmm. He's like that kid that tries to fit in, trying to do that, like the kip up to yeah. jump off the floor because he fell down. His ninja stars. And the ninja stars. And, <laughs> and then he's collectible failing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Toys collectible and toys, everything. He's yeah. like, he's such a nerd. And he has these, <laughs> yeah. like, re like, his imagination knows no bounds. Like, he, like he can get lost in his thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes him, and he, and his body size really says that he'll be able to do none of this. Having that as a like a main character, where you sort of like you have these all these like round shapes, Lee, and mm. I think plays on his own like that he's a bit chubby yeah. and that he's you know like he's aware. They've sort of balanced that really nice. So so I get I, I totally love that character because mm. he's so friendly and nice, but things aren't really going the way he wants you know like i don't know man poe is great and speaking of intros that yeah. the intro to the first kung fu panda is oh, one of the coolest intros. i love that 2d animated yeah, i wish there fucking, was a movie with that whole thing yeah. just yeah Enough talk. let's fight <laughs> Enough talking yeah <laughs> oh man yeah 
But that, the, I think it's brilliant. And then you have like Tigress, that mm. is his opposite. Yeah. And I think that dynamic, totally. like she's like focused, trained. yeah, trained, trimmed. Mm. Everything about her is exactly everything that Poe is not. Yeah. He's round and uh, cuddly, round, and cuddly. she's more yeah, he's soft triangular and, and pointy and rough and hard, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Right. And oh man, and mean. I don't know. And yeah, no, but she's angry and she has a lot of issues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, no, but he he's just brilliant for mm. me. He is super funny. Yeah, and also Genius. he really invites you into his world. You mm. know, like where where Tigress doesn't. Yeah. So yeah, but also a very memorable silhouette. Uh, exactly. Mm. If you tone him, like if you darken him down mm. to just a silhouette, he's still very sort of readable, and I think all of them are yeah. intentionally made that way. And yeah. you should also be making your characters this in that sense. Like yeah. if you take away all the detail that is your character, your character should also have something within his basic shape that mm. is memorable or like recognizable, yeah. like in an instant. Yes, and we're gonna go deep diving into this. Yep. Uh, but do you have any other characters that you like uh, that are awesome? Very much. Uh, just speaking of polar opposites, I guess the Joker is also a very epic character. Uh, I like the Joker, especially when uh, Mark Hamill. Yeah, makes Mark his... Hamill. Like, have you ever heard Mark Hamill sort of read the script for the Joker? Oh, and yeah, you yeah. just see Mark Hamill sitting there. Mm-hmm. But he he is Jesus that character. Like he really Christ. goes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's deep. Uh, I love seeing the stuff for the Arkham uh, games. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, genius. Also, the new guy that was taking over. Yeah, he's the, really good too. Oh my god! When I saw him, like like a short clip from Comic Con, reading mm-hmm. like parts of the script or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. Oh goosebumps. my god! Yeah, mm-hmm. I was so fucking. I was like, I don't want to meet that guy in real <laughs> life because that that is horrifying. Yeah. Uh, but going away from uh, the norm, because I mean, both my characters are oh, yeah, very white, normal, white rich of, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, we mentioned uh, again. I'm just gonna say we mentioned because we talked about this yeah, a we, lot. Yeah, we usually talk before. Uh, but Dexter, like I think Dexter, Dexter's lab uh, laboratory, oh, uh, Dexter, yeah, yeah. very very iconic and fun looking character. Uh, yeah. That's another one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and his sister, I guess the the, yeah. the, the play off the again, opposite the, thing. Yeah, again the polar opposite, and they're so extremely, uh, how do you say, apparent. Yeah, like, yeah. and he's a just, square pretty much. Like, yeah, he, like, he, yeah, he's, he's just a little like he's, square. Yeah, and he's a square, <laughs> and he's a square. Like he's boring <laughs> as much as he is designed. Yeah, <laughs> like pretty square. <laughs> <laughs> and Dee Dee is the exact. She's more like. Tall, lean, and she's a bit more elastic, like more than Dexter yeah. is in any also sort like of yeah. ballerina and no, but, you know, yeah. But all Dexter of this. is more of like a Lego character, <laughs> yeah. where he's sort of stiff yeah. as fuck, he's like a, really, and a two by two brick. Boom. Yeah, and and Dee Dee is like a bubble gum, you know, mm-hmm. like she's more like malleable to the situation, whereas Dexter just like he's what he is. <laughs> yeah. But the only boring part about it is that he's a kid with glasses that yeah, is smart, it, it, and he's a redhead. Yeah. It's sort of it's like again stereotype. Stereotype. But, yeah. but the thing is, I think it's fine to fall into the stereotype uh, thing if you break some other like stereotypical rules, you know. Mm. And I don't know. Dexter for me doesn't bother me because no. I think they want it to be that stereotypical white kid in the suburban area but that has a secret lab yeah uh but 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 yeah if we're going to talk about the stereotypes there are like some really typical ones mm. and it's the sexy curvy girl you know like they're always sexy and curvy yeah and thin thin and curvy thin and curvy yeah thin yeah. and curvy no matter how you dress their hair, whatever they are, they're thin and curvy like yeah even if you go for a black girl she's going to be thin and curvy mm. Although that seldom happens, like black is another minority yeah. that is overlooked or is like funny sidekick. Like if you look at movies or something, yeah, black people are usually underrepresented. 
Yeah, it's either a full, like full on black. Yeah, black movie, movie like or, Afro Samurai yeah. or something like that. That one is. Oh my god, that one is though. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of the speaking of stereotypes, stereotypes sexualizing everything, yeah. and yeah, 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 I definitely. still love it. But the, but the, <laughs> but I really like the main character. Yeah, like a black Afro Samurai, and I love the fact that he's damaged, like he's uh, schizo. Is he? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he has good. that thing that follows him around. Yeah, that the, is another the ninja yeah, guy. The ninja guy. He Which, has like an alter ego exactly. sort of ninja guy that follows him around. Yeah. Because yeah, he's just so broken and damaged from mm. seeing his dad. Yeah. Uh, but if you like, can uh, totally see past all the sexism mm. from that show, the character himself is pretty badass. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever seen a black samurai no portrayed and drawn in that way. That it like. No, so I, it's, good. it's really cool. I yeah. love, yeah, um, I own the the DVDs, of course, because mm. I collect. Yeah, but, but be just warned. So nice. Major sexism. Yeah. But, if I mean, you ever saw, like when it comes to the female characters. I, guess, I like, don't remember everything. It was years ago. I saw it when it aired. Like, say one anime that's not. No, really no, no, no. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not defending any anime. If you no. watch zombie, is it zombie high school or something like that? There's this scene where he uses a girl's breast to stabilize his uh, sniper rifle. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. What the fuck? Oh. And then he shoots and it passes between... Like, there's this girl fighting and she sort of goes... Like, leans backward and her breasts are sort of like going back and forth like flopping flopping exactly mm -hmm. and the bullet goes between them <laughs> and the breasts have time to f like uh, to do that like several times before the bullet sort of passes by so the first breast goes down the bullet passes by that breast comes back up the other breast sort of goes down the bullet passes by the breast you know <laughs> how would that speeding bullet have like not penetrated both breasts like that yeah and it's such a fucking weird scene and you know that the action in animation a lot of money goes to that mm -hmm. the fuck is this yeah. like he stabilizes her breasts he shoots between the legs so you get this like frog perspective of the girl's like panties and stuff the bullet goes past her legs <laughs> really close to her cooch and then just moves on past this girl's boobs and then like hit, headshots a zombie so of yeah sexism and it's sort of <laughs> yeah, in its prime, in its prime. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, but yeah but fuck that for now yeah minorities uh, yeah. and let's go back to the stereotypes uh, black people are usually portrayed as the black angry guy mm. he can be muscular which is often the norm for men yeah depending on the story comic or video game you know yeah what we want you to do is like sort of try to avoid these things mm. like the smart guy doesn't have to be Dexter, exactly. the white kid, some white scrawny kid with glasses, or this like girl in a ponytail with glasses. And glasses don't even have to play part of this. No. Like a smart person doesn't have to wear glasses. I uh, wear glasses and I'm not smart. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Use that as a reference. Uh, <laughs> no, but but the thing is, the big buff chick could be the smart guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, smart yeah, yeah. guy within. <laughs> yeah. Bunny ears. Of course. Uh, so, tr so try to think outside of th this box that we're all sort of... You don't intentionally always no, aim you, to insult or sort of follow a norm. But the way that we've been brought up, sort of... We have some stereotypes that we sort of easily fall into. Yeah. We don't Token really black think, guy. We don't think about smart it. Smart people <laughs> that wear glasses and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. A high horrible. school princess, you know, yeah, whatever. Jocks. There are some, yeah, exactly, jocks, and they're all they all have like something, but 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 we we have the power to sort of change what, like it doesn't have to be a norm. No, you know, like we could we can decide that my story will not be sort of put into this sort of generic cesspool of old ideas. Yeah, like I I think you said this before, and. It was like you 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 won't be able to create something original. Mm -hmm. Everything has been done in one way or another. Yeah. But you can sort of take 
some of your ideas mixed with some ideas that you like mm. and create something that is different. Exactly. That's normally how it's done. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's what I said before. Nothing today is original. Yeah, yeah. Everything has been done pretty much. Definitely. Like even music. You and know, you should aim has been to done. be like original because yeah. then you're going to be you're, you're going to have a f handful of nothing <laughs> yeah or you're going to have like an aneurysm oh yeah exactly and, you'll have that <laughs> <laughs> because you can't think of anything like i've been there i've, I've tried to yeah, me too. cook up uh, these brilliant new ideas for comic books and stories and what happens you just start bleeding from your nose and then mm -hmm. go into an epileptic seizure and wake up the next morning going like yeah fuck it <laughs> no but, but that's how it is you like you put so much pressure on yourself to create something that is unattainable mm. because we've been around for a while like i mean people yeah creating stuff so so I mean, a lot of it is probably done <laughs> so don't be afraid to reuse stuff but again i mean you can't just copy straight up but you know be inspired by the stuff that exists yeah and you usually make it better you know exactly because there is a lot of like your favorite character probably has some really good design ideas in it mm. that you could probably use in your own design. Exactly. Like we talked about Poe from Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. He's a bunch of fucking circles. Circles are friendly. They're yeah. nice. They're not pointy. They're not judging. You know, like you get a lot of impressions. Yeah. Well, if, if, if Poe from Kung Fu Panda was made of triangles and like a lot of like sharp edges, yeah, then he'd you be... might get a different opinion of who Poe is. Exactly. So that's interesting. Yeah. So what you could do, for example, is like take five or ten out of your favorite characters, line them up mm. in like Photoshop if you have that available or any other application, and then draw like pull back their opacity, like make a layer on top of them, and then just try to sort of like draw in their basic shapes and see what you have. Like take like characters that are opposites maybe mm. just like take some friendly character and then take some motherfucking evil dude you know like i don't know anyone that looks like shredder yeah like Pointy. and i'm talking about <laughs> the new shredder from the new movie the the the, the can opener oh, yeah. <laughs> like i'm not saying that he's a good design but he's so utensil? fucking no no exactly <laughs> they even make a joke about it in the fucking show <laughs> uh, but what i mean is just like take a couple of characters that you know are fucking evil and just see what is it that makes that basic shape yeah evil or like that you read it evil you know yeah. like because it's not the de just the details of the the actual no normally the details don't really have they don't any big effect on uh, they on give a character. you some like they give you a deeper story. Yeah, behind the character, but yeah. It's like normally it is the silhouette that defines the whole character, you know. Mm -hmm. Um and especially bad guys. Oh, bad guys have some nice, 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 nice things to them. Yeah. But yeah, usually angles are really good for and sharp edges. Like yeah, bad point, guys. Pointy yeah. horrible things. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to get stabby stabby with anyone. Yeah, exactly. Like the Joker, he's got very pointy nose, mm -hmm. triangular eyes, the grin, triangle. Like his whole everything about him is just a triangle. And now I'm speaking from the animated show, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say Heath Ledger is uh, very pointy, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, very, very pointy. And Batman is very square. He's meticulous. He's organized. So his whole posture is just very square. Exactly. Which is, it's not a polar opposite. He's not a round character, but he's still very different from the Joker. Yeah. Just so you know. And, and I would say also uh, some things to keep in mind when creating your characters is sort of like body type does he have to be a lean white man for example because mm. that's usually what everyone does we use ourselves i'm not saying that everyone who listens is a white person <laughs> no. but try to see other ethnicities like mix it up your your character doesn't have to be a lead white man no maybe your character would be better if he was like, depending on the environment that he grew up in or something. Just have an idea of why yeah. you're making that decision. Don't make it just because you're white or make a black hair because you're black. I would say just use 
the information that you have about where your character originates from mm. and then give them a personality that you can sort of evolve yeah. and not be default white. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't yeah. be default white because that is sort of the norm. We're trying to break away from that mold mm. and just create awesome characters. And maybe your character shouldn't be, you know, muscular. No. Maybe that's not even... Why is he muscular? He hasn't worked out ever. Exactly. You know? And how does he keep that muscularity if yeah. he's not never working out? You know, like... Yeah, exactly. Why is Superman so muscular? He's got superpowers. He flies all the time. He should be fat as fuck. <laughs> like, seriously. Uh, yeah, th- he doesn't th- walk anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just levitating. Like Batman, I understand because the fucker has to run yeah, and he, jump and do shit. And but Superman has the superhuman ability. And I don't know how that would affect his physique. Like, does flying exert him? It doesn't. I don't think it does. I mean, in the beginning, he was jumping. And that turned he was, into Yeah, flying, and then but... turned into... Yeah, exactly. But what I'm saying is, like, try to find reasons. Like... Not everything needs a reason, but it is pretty cool to have like, oh, he acts like this because of that. Mm -hmm. And because it gives your character like you understand why he does a certain thing in the way that he does. Exactly. Like Poe, again, like great example. Poe is great because he even makes sort of fun of his own sort of like he he body shames himself pretty much just because he's aware that he's a bit chubby and that it's... And that's so fun. And, you know, his superpower is related to food. Which is, I mean, you know, food he, he makes him, yeah, yeah. Food makes him forget about that he is sort of overweight. Yeah, and, and he becomes could, what he's supposed to become. Yeah, food is it's, his motivator. Like, mm-hmm. he, f- food helps him focus. Yeah, and then once he masters, like, sort of realizes that he can use food to become awesome, he doesn't need food in the same no, way exactly. that he did before. Because then he released the. The block, the mental block. Exactly. You know? And I think uh, Poe's development is just yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's genius. But also, just to keep going with the, the things that could sort of help your character stand out. Disabilities. Yeah. Like, Xavier is yeah. an awesome Professor. character. Uh, he's one of the yeah, main characters. I, I, I mean, like, he doesn't usually... Like, I haven't but, read many comics. But I don't he know doesn't he... stick out, you know, or stand out. No. Not like he... Wolverine or... No, no, no. Uh... But, but if you ask, like, if you, if you ask people about... P- characters from the X-Men. People know Xavier. Oh, yeah. People do know Xavier. Of course. It's like bald, wheelchair guy. But he's like the dad to all That's mutants. That's what I mean. Yeah. And he has this sort of... He's so interesting. And especially mm-hmm. with the new Logan movie. Oh, hell yeah. Fuck, that, that, that Xavier is my favorite Xavier. And like. such a cool twist. You know, giving him uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, sorry if you guys haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, don't... It, Okay, we're going to go into spoiler territory. <laughs> yeah, spoilers, sorry. Spoiler territory. Logan spoilers. Uh, but yeah, just having that extreme flaw, you know, just... Yeah. So <laughs> his telekinesis power thingy-majig goes, goes bananas. When he yeah. gets like a seizure, he starts... Like he... Everything within... Uh, like yeah. imagine an atom bomb. He, he can probably do even worse. Mm-hmm. Like... Um, but just, you know, I, I don't know who thought of it. Don't know, man. But fucking genius. Yep. You know, what would happen if the the most powerful brain in the world yeah. was damaged, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking it's so genius. Good. And so simple. Like mm-hmm. that idea. It's so And you know what simple. I like more about him? Is his appearance in this movie. Mm. He's, he's sort so of worn like down. worn down. The whole he's, movie is like that. And he's, though. you know, like Xavier is bald, but in this movie, he has like some hair growing back. Yeah. Because he's not able to sort of take care of himself. Yeah, exactly. So his hair is sort of flying to the sides. He looks very sort of like sometimes he's totally out of it. Mm. He doesn't know where he is, what he's done. Sometimes he's, you know, like himself. And sometimes he's just sort of like so frustrated mm. with Logan that he's like acting like a child (laughs) like petulant child you know like yeah just does stuff because he's frustrated and angry and it's he's so awesome yeah so good damn it and wolverine also no logan really is something else here he's sort of like he's like sort of taking he's like that kid that lost his like he's taking care of his mother and his Mm. brother pretty much you know like that sort of vibe that you're getting but also there like he's also damaged and he's like the adamantium oh, has given him cancer, 
in the movie. So he's, he's yeah, it's poison- dying. Yeah, yeah like, it's poisoning him. He needs to uh, he needs to sort of get it out. In, but he can't. He's fucked, and he knows he is. And he doesn't want to. No, <laughs> he's but, but but I really like that yeah. scene when he's push. P- yeah, like, when he's r- pulling out the, the claws just to sort of like l- lube them, pretty mm-hmm. much, to just get them going. Yeah, and but they're not just the fact responding. that one isn't coming out. You know, yeah, it's like just and halfway. He's just, yeah, and he's it's just so pulling that out. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh. Oh. But it's so good. Like it really builds the character mm. there. Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. So if you guys haven't seen it, sorry for jumping into spoilers. I get excited sometimes. Can't. <laughs> no, but we help gave it. your warning. Yeah. Uh, but it's an amazing movie. You need to see it. If you're, if you've seen any of the other X Men movies, you know this is the this best is... send off, I guess, for Hugh Jackman. And if you hated character. those movies. Yeah, this one this reconciles one is... everything. <laughs> yeah, this is nothing like them. No, because no. I I find those movies. A bit like childish yeah. and sort of like ridiculous, and they're also like already a bit outdated. Yeah, like, but but there are newer ones, and I think that yeah, those yeah. not even those feel I liked, serious. Um, I like the new ones with McAvoy and. Mm, uh, I don't. I think I still good. think they are sort of childish. Like I, I can have to be. Yeah, but that's they what I hate about PG. them, and that's why I love. But Logan, Logan. is an R-rated fucking movie, and it's that's brutal. perfect. Yes. Go Fox! Exactly. Although I don't like Fox either. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but sorry. yeah, going back to uh, so we covered the stereotypes, or no, I have some not, more things. We still have more. Yes, sorry. I have more things. Sorry, no, just uh, well, actually, the stereotypes are the stereotypes. You'll you'll know the the the, the token black guy, the Mexican firework taco guy. <laughs> no, but I just mean. It's not hard to figure Asian out. Asian bad driver. <laughs> Indian cab driver, for yeah. example. African, you know, like, some sort of savage, blah, 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 you know, like, whatever. And a Jamaican dude. Asian kung, <laughs> Asian kung fu dude. Yeah. Like, I have my Asian token guy here that can, that knows kung fu because that's, uh, you know, yeah. stereotypes. You've met them. You've you... drawn them. I've drawn them. Robert's done them. Yes. Uh so some things to keep in mind when creating these characters, like body types, age, usually sort of youngish, yeah, yeah. like the the protagonist. Push that fucking envelope. Yeah. That's what I love about Logan. He's old as fuck. Old as fuck, but still awesome. You know, like, your character doesn't have to be in that magical age of, you know, like 15 to 25. Like, push it. Mm. I'm, I promise you, your characters will be more... Interesting. They will stick out more if they're not sort of if they don't look like your general anime hero, you know. Yeah, actually, it's cooler. It is way cooler. Like, oh man, like old man Logan looks so much cooler than than normal any Logan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have like sexual orientation, gender identity, disabilities, mental health, and ethnicity that we talked about before. Like, you just keep those things in mind. Like, create a character that, you know, that is interesting, that has a lot of variety, in, but have a reason for doing it, you know? Yeah. Don't just make it a token black guy that does this thing. He's He came from a gangster background, <laughs> shooting sideways, but now he's part of, I don't know, you know. The, the, the Justice Gang. The ju- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. With Papa Deep Pop and... Sorry. Yeah, but, but that is what I mean. Yeah. You create sort of like, oh, well, I can pull the stereotype into this other stereotype and we'll have stereotype heroes. Yeah. And that's, I we guess, should do that. Yeah, we should. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Don't uh, steal our idea. <laughs> so, yeah, Ed, you're... I just stole it. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, stereotypes are not real people. People are more complex. And yeah. I think something to sort of use here is like, look at your family members, like brother, mother, no matter who it is, or your best friend that you probably know more about than your parents. <laughs> probably. Uh, especially if you've grown up together and sort of did the good and the bad together. Hmm. You'll sort of see why this person became the person that he is or you know yeah and i think that's how complex your character needs to be if you're going to use him more like if you're making one image 
and you it, want a hero, yeah, do whatever and, the fuck you yeah, want. Exactly. It's still going to be interesting if you can push that, mm. but you don't have to do like this research. You maybe just want to draw because you love drawing. Yeah. And sometimes you just want to do the shit that you feel like. That you is fine. Do you a can, jumping archer. Exactly. Exactly. Jumping archer. Stereotypical white male, 25 <laughs> of age. It's fine. Yeah. Like you can do whatever the fuck you want. But if you want to make characters that sort of differentiate from you know whatever video games are giving us nowadays because hmm. video games movies still white people in charge yeah telling others what to do but yeah. then this black guy like yeah brother yeah man <laughs> uh that that kid's whack you know like <laughs> yeah. yeah like i i just want you to avoid that stuff but, but you now, can draw whatever i mean i think the the new stereotype is now the the new school lara croft woman Is what I'm seeing in in especially in games, because now it's it's a female uh, hero, mm -hmm. which is great, more for you know equality. Uh, I'm all for it, but they all feel like the same person, like Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Tomb Raider, uh, Scarlett Johansson, and uh, what's it called, Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell. Uh, also, her Scarlet, uh, which, oh, <laughs> Scarlet, uh, Black Widow. Sorry, Avengers. Yeah, it's the same character you know, over and over. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. just yeah. And again, with the like we said, the the female shape. It's the same. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same body type. Thinking yeah. Cora. Yeah, but uh, she's from still, Legend of Cora. She's still sexy, and she fits. But the she's same... not sexy in that sense that they they don't pose her sexy. No, they no, don't no. put her. She doesn't have like. No, she's a extra... tomboy. You know? Exactly, and that is your first impression of her. She's yeah. like, she's not white, I would say. She's because I think she has like a darker she is, complexion. She is, yeah, brown. I guess. I don't know. More, yeah, I don't know what her complexion is. I don't the know. Pakistani, I would say, more mulat. I don't know. Ish. But I really Beautiful. like her, and the thing is, I think what makes her great is that they're not. Because if if Cora was doing sort of sexy stuff, it would ruin Cora. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't ruin the integrity of your character. If 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 your character is not like some sort of, I don't know what to say here, a working girl, mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, don't make her sexual unless she's in a situation where she sort of would be. Use the stereotypes, but use them like don't wisely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't 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 use them just like the way they are no like takes like because there are white people in the world mm -hmm. you can't sort of not draw them to avoid it i mean i would go there because i am a white guy and i can relate easier to white people obviously because i wouldn't know what it's like growing up as a, an asian or a, a black kid in a and white you, suburban neighborhood you yeah. know because i i haven't been through that abuse so or but, abuse but that if is, it even is like no, no but i mean Again, stereotypes. <laughs> stereotypes, yeah, exactly. So, and it's so easy to fall into. Hmm. But I'm just saying, you don't have to worry about being judged. But try to sort of venture out of your comfort zone and explore. Like, oh, I don't know how that is, but that would be kick-ass for my story. Yeah. Talk to people. Uh, so, yeah. But let's move on. Yes. So try to avoid these stereotypes when you create your characters. Uh, You can complain at sketchbookheroes.com about that. <laughs> yes. And yeah, below on the website, there is a comment section. Please discuss. Yeah. That, that would be awesome to sort of hear your thoughts. Your thoughts on uh, stereotypes, you know, norms and all that <laughs> stuff. Like before you even start drawing anything. So put that pencil down. And then pick it up. And then pick it up if you're going to use it for writing. Yeah, <laughs> take notes. Uh, but yeah, a couple of things to keep in mind is sort of like where will this character sort of live? Yeah. Or where is he born? Or what is his environment? Surroundings. Is it, yeah. Is yeah. it first of all maybe like is it fantasy? Yeah. Science fiction. Exactly. Start with the really big, big porno. You know, yeah. futuristic <laughs> porno. Yeah. Uh, no matter what the hell you're, you're sort of. Uh, environment is that's going to pretty much set, that'll give you a lot of information about like said unknown character yeah 
Right. And I would still avoid sort of gender at this stage. I was just like, okay, so it's a fantasy driven story or it's a sci fi driven story, cyberpunk, mm, steampunk, yeah. whatever. Fantasy. Yeah, steampunk fantasy, futuristic, smack it back and whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that'll give you some information. Mm. So let's just go with fantasy because. I'm lazy. Uh, <laughs> so th then you'll get a lot of information there. And then what type of character is he? Is he born in sort of like a fantasy desert, a dragon's cave, you know, some dude's balls? Yeah. Where most of us originate. Is, is he or she human? Or exactly. Uh, is it an alien or, or a dragon? Dragonborn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're fa yeah. fantasy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I see a dragonborn. I see. And, and dragonborn is probably the way you shouldn't go <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> so dragonborn anyone any yeah. dragonborn out there there you uh, go yeah so no <laughs> but that'll give you a lot of information mm. so i would start there because that'll sort and then let's say just for the sake of things it's a girl okay just two i don't know put girls in front this time Which sounds very weird. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I say from this point on yeah. will be terrible. Uh, no. <laughs> But then you have this female lead, okay? Her parents, existent, non-existent, we don't know. Is she white? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, no. No. But depending on her surrounding. Yeah. Like, is she originally from there? Uh, her parents, her, was she born in a lab? What is her sort of... And then just like start fleshing her out. Like we said before, family and friends. Mm. They've all been through shit. Some of your friends are not from the same country or ethnicity as you are. Okay? So there are tons of variables you could play in here. So this girl, she works at this sort of futuristic desert scrapyard, okay? Mm -hmm. She's lost an arm. Because as a kid, she was a bit more adventurous. <laughs> okay, so she lost an arm and a, you know, I don't know, a third of a leg. So now we've gone into steampunk instead of fantasy. I don't know. Or... I don't know. No, but it is sort of like a. Did I say scrapyard? Yeah, you did. I did, didn't I? It's a fantasy scrapyard. Okay, <laughs> you of love magical. No, 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 no. I know. <laughs> but but it's a. But I'm not thinking of the classic ones that I draw. I'm thinking of more like sort of metallic sort of thing. But we're gonna put them in a fantasy setting mm -hmm. to avoid my stereotypical <laughs> thinking. And so it's her. maybe a, a magical destruction center where they sort of like put magical objects to be destroyed. Okay. Nice. Never done this before. Never heard this anywhere. You got my money. Yeah. So <laughs> we have this like magical desert facility that they take all the magical objects that they can obtain because some high ruler that we're gonna change later is not a high ruler. <laughs> uh, but 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 they send the magical artifacts here to be destroyed so they can't like come into the hands of someone. <laughs> uh, so what she does is. She She steals some of that stuff and builds herself sort of uh, prosthetic arms. And they're not the best prosthetic arms, but they're sort of like still... They have, you know, like... I'm thinking uh, Treasure Planet, mm -hmm. that sort of arm with all the functionality. It yeah. could come to sort of that place at some point. But right now it's more of like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> and if I adjust it a little, I can do sort of normal shit. Hmm. And she does that with her leg and her sort of, you know, the arm. And then you can have that. This girl is sort of brought up at this sort of magical waste center. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's pretty hot. It's in the desert. So she would have sort of... That would have affected her. So she's a bit more dark-skinned, uh, bruised. I don't know. Her hair... I'm I'm seeing that it's very hot. It's very so. She either has a lot of hair to sort of protect herself, or she's very short, trimmed hair. You know because that shit gets in the way. Hmm. So either tightly wrapped or cut off. And now you have a character that maybe is not as normal as. And then you you body type. I'm seeing that they're sort of starved here. <laughs> uh, sort of treated like slaves in this sense you are in the desert so. but, but but it's not like anyone's watching them in that sense that they're sort of it's so much people there that you know like 
they sort of have to make do of whatever is there. Nobody really gives a shit about them. They just can't leave. Mm. That's pretty much. There is some, I guess, some sort of food that comes around. But let's leave the. the, the we know the environment setting now. Like we've gone way, way too specific with this character, anyways. Anyway, yeah, exactly. Robert is <laughs> totally on the money here. <laughs> no, but but I mean, this character now. Now we have something, okay? Now we'll, we're just kind of focus on the character. Like everybody <gasps> listening now, you can already see this character. You can like, sort of see something. She's already done in your head. But wow. the thing, yeah, now now it's time to sort of like you have like a vague idea of what she looks like or what you think she looks like. But then body type and all these things come to mind now because now we can play around with this. And how would you or your friends or someone that you can relate closely to react to living in a place like this like imagine just like a really hot day in the sun that made you feel awesome or like awful mm -hmm. you know or something like i was in a sauna and it felt like this or i was in a somewhere where heat was unbearable or you know like stuck in a elevator and yeah. just like yeah. keep building off of stuff that you know that are relatable but i mean just use that stuff to sort of what would you wear in a place like this where you can sort of like touch something and get burned, but it's too hot to wear anything? You know yeah. what I mean? What would be the ideal clothing for this character? And how would you build on top of that later? Because characters usually in comics, uh, animes, animation, they're pretty dirty fuckers. They use the same sort of clothes all the time. For obvious reasons. For obvious reasons, yeah, They exactly. can't reinvent new clothes every issue or every episode because it's going to take too long to do. It needs to look just right, you know, all of this stuff. So, you know, we know why they do it. Yeah. Uh, but also, like, it's easier for them to maintain the character if you have the same clothes, you know, mm -hmm. because you do relate everything to the appearance of this character. Yeah. So this is Saharan... Uh, uh, orphan, uh, whatever she is, she is magician, yeah, yeah, disposal service, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she she will probably be wearing, I think one, like in my head, she's gonna have a certain outfit when she is this sort of slave esque worker in this thing. Uh, it feels like they're slaves, like. Mm -hmm. they're, whipped, they're they're in this compound being forced they, to work that was i think i said that that they were confined to uh, this area no one's actually standing like beside them no, sort of they, pushing them they don't really but have they're a not free yeah no but then she, i'm guessing she's gonna break free and uh, go on some epic adventure and then probably change her outfit exactly so maybe she will... to look different so they can't find her or because of practicalities they're moving to antarctica or some really cold place and yeah. she needs to change and what i'm thinking here with that is also that her hair is just part of her circumstance like i don't want long hair because that shit burns yeah and it hurts it's, <laughs> and, it's sweaty <laughs> and maybe that'll also change the texture of her hair to sort of be a bit rougher mm. because it's been burnt off so many times before she sort of decided mm. to keep it short or something like that yeah and when she does escape she can change her hair a bit but I think I would keep something from the outfit that she has there. Yeah. Just so... Uh, along with her later yeah. to sort of tie her back into that place. Well, she does have the mechanical arm, so... She does, exactly. Or but maybe there is something aesthetics. sort of like a cloth or something that ties back into that place. Like, I don't know, you know, like yeah. I'm just thinking it's something ties she back. She doesn't want to let go all the way. Exactly. You know? uh, yeah. But like I said, this... It feels like I gave you a lot, but maybe you you have a story. Mm. You just don't have any characters. Yeah. And from 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 your story about the the magical waste <laughs> station <laughs> uh, in the desert. Yeah. Hopefully, in this epic fantasy, <laughs> inspired by this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'd totally love to see this character <laughs> yeah. from you guys. Like how you would interpret this character <laughs> from everything that we've said. Uh. And her body type could also change. I guess it's not sort of what the norm would say because people sort of want to keep it, you know, sort of looking the same. Yeah. Uh, but it's all up to you. 
Like, I would say, why not have a character evolution where the character goes from sort of, like, malnourished, which is my idea here, mm -hmm. where they get, like, minimum. They find sort of plants that grow in the heat that you can sort of chew on just to get some energy. I don't know. Yeah, they live but, on vitamins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you don't get sort of... You don't get any sort of... You don't build of, any mass. Yeah, mm. there's no... Like, you don't get body fat from it. You don't gain mass from chewing leaves, you know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but then put her in a situation where she actually gets normal food. And maybe she's sort of like a glutton because like, oh my God, it's so cheap. And you know, because she's acquired funds and then starts <laughs> eating like a fucker. Yeah, she's rich now. No, but imagine that. Like imagine you have your favorite foods or you're, you've you been on some sort of diet or something and you come off of it and you're yeah. like, I'm going to eat every fucking Just binge. It's, mm. it's cheat day or whatever <laughs> the fuck it is. You know, like. Imagine how you would eat. Maybe that's her reaction. That mm -hmm. is more relatable than someone just being toned all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, it depends on the story. Yeah, like, but that's, the reason. that's a good twist, you know? That's something we don't really see that often. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be anyway. played on... Like, like oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Remember Crimson, the comic? Oh, yeah. He was a vampire. And vampires in that comic by Humberto Ramos... Correct. ...couldn't feel flavor. When they were dead, they could eat. Yeah, they they, they had the functionality to eat, but they couldn't feel it. Like, no. but he kept doing it, and he he just like had fries and everything, and he just like sort of, like you know like. Yeah, but then like he uh, he does something like it was so long ago, but yeah, I don't he does something to sort of make his brain remember what it tastes like, and it tastes like fifty times better. Yeah, he, when he like he uses, locks up, yeah, exactly. This, but that is like perfect. he uses some sort of magic or whatever to yeah. make it. But yeah, but, and it, but that, that is scene totally is totally so pointless. Yeah, but it's not. No, it because it really gives a dimension to that character, and that's it's relatable. You know, very. Because I love eating junk food. That's what I've been doing all weekend. That's why I'm fucked up now. But yeah, fuck if I didn't if I didn't have taste. Yeah. Like my life would be meaningless. <laughs> but that's why I we have people at work that drink these like sort of joylent, which is sort of like a imagine a protein drink like after the gym like a whey. Yeah. But this is just like to replace a meal. Ah, one of those. Yeah, so it's like flavor of banana. <laughs> I'm like that no. is garbage. Like I could have a burger or like I could have food for the same calories. But you're telling me that I'm going to drink something that looks like mud, that tastes like <laughs> banana every day. Oh, no, but there's chocolate and and raspberry. I'm Just like, no. But no. Like, I really love my burgers. Mm -hmm. I had a burger today. It was I great. had a burger for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I couldn't eat when I got in. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Uh, so, so have these little sort of things with your characters. It's what makes them relatable. Exactly, because we all have things in our lives that seem totally weird for other people. It's like eating kiwis with sort of the peel on. I the love peel it. is it's awesome. The it's it's so like good. a bit, like the, the, the kiwi in itself can be a bit sweet, mm. especially if it's sort of been, but, but the peel will always be sort of like a bit sourish. Mm -hmm. And that combo. I had one yesterday. Exactly. It was great. And... Crunchy. People think that's weird. Like I eat the whole apple. Like I eat all of it. He does. I do eat all of it. I just like it fucking is weird. But the thing <laughs> is, it's my thing. You know, like I used to do that, but then I realized why. Yeah, I eat the seeds. <laughs> the, the the core, everything goes yeah. down. I don't care. It's like I'm too lazy to throw it away. Mm. You eat it. So there you go. Use that for one of your characters. Makes him weird and mm. funny. Yeah, it and adds relatable. like a personality trait, like a, a weird thing that they do, like they eat a lot of food or they, it's it's simple stuff actually. Yeah, again, just look at your close friends and relatives, steal ideas from them. Yeah, like our character right now is a bit different and... We could even twist that up more, you know, like we've, we've said some things. Uh, we have our backstory or backstory where she sort of grows up is this magical uh, waste station. Okay. So that is, so everything that we put on her starts from there. 
So we have that she's a bit scrawny because there's not enough food to go around. People eat rations. They've found some weird plants that sort of uh, can sustain them. Maybe they're all a bit sick, though. You know, you don't realize you just sort of like, this is how I'm supposed to feel when I'm feeling good. Yeah. But it's not sort of the best way. Maybe so, they're magical fumes. Exactly. That keep you... Uh, so depressed. maybe this character at this stage has a lot of like, the eye sockets are a bit more, you know, like stronger. Everything is a bit more. Mm. Like, we're going into crazy detail for no reason. Yeah. But <laughs> it is, it, it's a fun backstory, I think, to work with. So they've they've taken stuff from this power station, okay? Or the waste station. So we're just going to move back out, zoom out, forget everything that we just said about eye sockets and shit and just go on the big the big picture here. And try to sort of like this is the point where you can start sketching your character out based on the information about the magical waste station in the desert. You know that it's super hot. You know that you like a lot of surfaces that you touch are steaming hot but you can't be naked and you can't have too much clothes on and so you have to out of these sort of things that you know about the story because the story is not there yet you just have this sort of vague way station mm. so from that you can start start sketching a couple of early drafts of your character and keep it super loose like try to try a scrawny version Try, uh, I don't know, maybe this person has easier to gain weight. Maybe they're not that malnourished. Maybe it's the one person that's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, like, play around with it. Don't get locked into this one thing. And just sketch around. Like, keep it very basic. Yeah. Like, once you find something like, oh, my God, this is the right track, you can move up that on to another page, you know, and then iterate on that. If you're working digitally... Once you've got a couple of good sketches, like choose the ones that sort of feel right, opacity down, and then just draw on top of them. Yeah. Or redraw them, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then just keep evolving this character. Add and try to keep the, the notes that you have on the character on the side, like always visible to sort of remind you. Uh, if it is malnourished, you keep malnourished, whatever it is, just have those little... Uh, What do you call notes. them? Yeah, notes, mm. crutches, to keep reminding you what the the sort of the disposition of this character is. Now you have a gender, so you have the gender. Mm. Uh, maybe set an age. My first thing was 15 to 20. I was thinking I, younger. I was thinking I was, more I thought, 10. like, depending on when you start the story. Mm. But maybe this person has grown up there yeah. and then comes out to the world like late 30s yeah you i'm thinking know. even older actually i'm thinking yeah i actually thought like 50 yeah <laughs> just just to, now yeah like but the thing is it depends on what this character is supposed to do when he comes out but And imagine yeah. this character being so maybe this this place can be enormous as well you know it's a magical waste station i don't know maybe it's super tiny maybe it's super small yeah uh who that's knows? the same thing yeah <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> we're going way too much into details like seriously if you go back to the sketching just keep sketching loose using the the sort of the, the basics that we know i've really gotten caught up and this is what i don't want you to do like getting caught up is super easy because it's inspiring and it's fun so start off with sort of writing some stuff down which is magical way station uh And then whatever you can pick out for your character from that. And then once you have a couple of notes, you don't have to have them all. You don't need the whole like backstory thing. Don't even think backstory. Just you know where the character is sort of originating from a little. And then you just take that. You start sketching ideas. Hmm. And your character will probably become more and more complex as you go. But right now we're just trying to get the basic stuff out. So you, you sketch loosely and try to keep them pretty small right now. Mm. Don't go too sort of overly big and put a lot of details. No, you just want basic shapes. Uh, and you guys probably have like different style preferences. So yeah. whatever you see in your head is what you should use. I've given you a lot of information about the location. The character doesn't have to be a girl. It doesn't have to be a boy. It can be a creature. 
of the night, a <laughs> creature of the day, a creature of the desert, who cares? So play around with the shapes. Like, you know what? Wipe the gender entirely. Just do whatever the fuck you want. Try to find a character that fits how you're imagining this. And then just sketch it out. And take it from there. And see what you have. So what would you say is the next step, Robert? Like, you have, like, you've done a couple of designs. Um, well, if you've started sketching, now it's about fleshing out the character. So if you've done a pair of, or a bunch of loose sketches, and you're starting to nail what style you're after and all of this, then you've automatically started to define more characteristics of the character. This will happen automatically. But this is the point where you start adding in those details and sort of build on the story of the character so uh, I mean we know that this character has a prosthetic arm and maybe leg mm -hmm. um, so now it's like incorporating all the the finer details like the bandana on the thing what's mm -hmm. that look like if she has one of those or he or if it's just a yeah, wrap yeah or, or yeah. is it some sort of jewelry she's found lying around or is it a magical amulet or you know it could be Ooh, that would be cool all of this sort of stuff that she's grabbed or uh, this thing has grabbed because <laughs> mm -hmm. in my head now it's not it, it is it is female parents but mm -hmm. it's more of a lizard like character that yeah belongs to this people in the desert because the lizards live desert you know yeah yeah but yeah, so yeah, going in and then really shaving out the details. Um, yeah, so you have uh, yeah. the idea, you have the, the, the sketch. Yeah, you have. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean with the yeah. idea. Like yeah. all that so information. We have, the, we have the background. So I we guess. have, yeah, background and ideas. You have this, the basic sketches where you sort of, you've found... A couple that work for you, like you found a silhouette that reads well. Mm. Yeah, and then you take it to the stage that Robert said, where you sort of start adding stuff to see if it sort of works with mm. that silhouette. Yeah. And I guess at this point, you just need to keep adding. Actually, just remove adding and removing. Yeah, until sort of. you find the the balance that works. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to put in stuff just to put <clears throat> in stuff. It needs mm -hmm. to be. Yeah functional i guess uh, or to the setting surrounding you know that yeah. is sort of because even if you change the environment drastically mm. you would sort of need to keep some of the things maybe it's the silhouette that keeps the read like a di distinct face scar no matter what it is yeah. like I'm, I'm not saying you should put a scar in the face for no reason just to recognize the character no it should be there for a reason but i mean there are usually stuff you know like a, a certain type of hair a certain type of eyes a certain type of nose you know like there are always and distinctive just, stuff. Uh, uh, it occurred to me that a lot of you people might not know what a silhouette is actually oh a silhouette is sort of Imagine a shadow of the character, just yeah, black. Just black. Or... Fill your whole character exactly. with black. So no details whatsoever except for what it looks like in an outline, I guess you yeah. could say. So, because um, uh, like I've, I've learned this through talking to a lot of uh, clients and I'm like, yeah, we could do it like a silhouette and do this and this. And they're like, yeah, cool. What's a silhouette? Oh. <laughs> or they <laughs> think a silhouette is like... Just a profile of a person. Oh, which, what? Yeah. I mean, I understand what they mean, I guess, how they could think something no, like I that. I can see it. It makes no sense no, in a it, way, but it's but sort it's still, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still understand it. But yeah, so just so you guys know, sorry, I had to. No, but I think that's good. Just in case. Yeah. Because we don't want you guys, us saying stuff and you can't. No. We don't want to assume that everybody knows exactly what the hell we're talking about. Yeah. Zoom. <laughs> yeah, but but at this stage, you have a lot of sort of stuff, information. Yeah. Now you can keep adding information to your character. Like, let's say your design is so solid. Let's say you have Po from yeah. Kung Fu Panda. Mm -hmm. Like, you've taken it not all the way, because Po isn't that complicated a character. And I think that is the key. Is like you have all these sort of like all the story, mm. but in the end, the character is so simple. Yeah. But has so much information. 
you know, because Poe has like an apron and some other shit that he has a lot, like in the beginning of the movie. You yeah. sort of say that he's a waiter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like all this sort of complex information needs to be sort of brought, you know, brought to a down, simple, yeah, to, and added to the simple silhouette mm. that is your character. Yeah. And of course, your character can have tons of detail, but you have to, like we said before, with the cowboy hat. You can't just put a thing on him like he has this cowboy star on his chest. And let's say he doesn't have all the rest. Yeah. Or cowboy boots and a star or something. Mm -hmm. You're you're telling the audience something. Mm. So some of his accessories, like he can have a little cute keychain, that is fine. But if it's too specific to a stereotype thing, people will usually make that connection. Yeah. So you might want to avoid, like if he has a hat backwards, you're like, oh, that kid, that's a troublemaker. You know, yeah, like, exactly. but, but I have that in real life sometimes. Yeah. I'm not a troublemaker of any sorts. Like I'm, I'm a dad, you know, <laughs> for two kids. And I usually, my life is pretty timid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just saying that within cartoons or like, Yeah, drawing. people will always read into the stuff you do more than you do yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, he has it like this because he thinks it's nice. No, yeah, he's you, a you think it's cool. Yeah, you know, and then, you know, you can't defend it by just saying, I think it's cool. Well, yeah. you can. No, of you, can. you can. You can do whatever you want. But it's I'm always just saying good to it's have. It's cool uh, to have a like every. Mm. It's a what do you call it? A, a conscious decision. Yeah, it's cool because then you're like, yeah. And you think like this because I did this and this. And you're like, yes, that is exactly what I thought. And it's cool to be able to sort of control. Like, not mm -hmm. everyone is going to be on the level with your idea. No. But if you do a good design, people will usually read it almost the same. Mm. And yeah. that's all you can ask for, almost the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. So uh, now we've uh, sort of designed our character pretty yeah. much. And we have a setting. So pretty much now it's just finalizing the character, I guess, mm -hmm. or rendering the whole image. So it all depends. I mean, now we've set up this gigantic scenario. It's so not as big as you think, though. No, I know, because but it, it is, is just the one scene. It's that one but it, place. But it feels yeah, like a chapter in a book in my head. You yeah, know? in my head as well. Like, it's like a it's lot huge. of backstory. And, but so. I have nothing. When I think about it, like, actually think about it. There's not a lot happening in this sort no, of story. It's no. just like that one power or dump, the power dump. <laughs> yeah, the power dump. <laughs> I'll take a power. I'll take you to the power dump. <laughs> yeah, with the magical yeah. disposal station. I had a power dump this morning. <laughs> It was fantastic. It was magical. <laughs> yeah. But here you can, for example, let's say you have your gadgety arm, you have the, the prosthetic leg. And you have whatever the fuck the outfit and silhouette of your character is. Now you can go e even deeper. Like maybe this person took some objects of magic and put them in the prosthetic arm. Mm -hmm. That's so without knowing. They're just like, oh, this looks nice. I'll yeah, just exactly. put this thing, this amulet into this socket this here on pretty. my arm. Exactly. Or like used magical bolts and screws. I don't and know what the fuck like it is. <laughs> Starts powering up something. And... and maybe that's not active yet or something like until they do this one thing that they mm -hmm. didn't do. Like, oh, what if I can you spin this? And then like, oh, my God, my arm is doing its thing. Awesome. And the leg does, you know, like then you have an ability. Mm -hmm. This person's ability is to survive in the desert, like in the beginning. Yeah. And has this like semi-functional arm. It's not, when I say prosthetic arm. It's not like a fully functional arm that does like 360 turns and can... It's a piece of shit. It's like Furiosa's uh, prosthetic in Mad Max. I don't remember what the functionality there was. It was just a grabby... like. Oh, uh, was it? To, yeah. To I know it was the... a latch. Yeah, yeah, she had a sort of... But that's what I'm thinking pretty much. Like It can do some things. Mm. So you can sort of have like a 80% normal life. But then at times it jams or it sort of messes up and you have to sort of spend time on it. Mm. And then you use it for a while and it sort of unhinges again or something, you know, like yeah. it's a, it's a more it's of a, a mess. <laughs> yeah. The benefits don't come free. It's like a hassle mm. all the time. And that makes, gives the character, like maybe they complain about it all the time. Yeah, but like in mid-fight, something happens and exactly. the arm doesn't work anymore. And, exactly. Yeah. And it's just the dead weight. Yeah. 
and the leg maybe does the same or mm. maybe the leg is the one that works it's like a spring or something you know i don't know yeah it's like i a good enough spring that you can sort of like take a step without it like giving way and you fall yeah so the, the the basic design is done so now you can keep adding this 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 level of detail mm. that'll sort sort of push your character further along with whatever story you have yeah and ours is but yeah. mag- the magical <laughs> dumb place <laughs> yeah. the, the arm the things whatever the gender or body type or uh so just keep pushing it and just Definitely. always take step back it takes steps back and look at the overall thing and like okay am i really going in the right direction here and mm-hmm. yeah and just keep challenging yourself and the way you think all the mm-hmm. time cuz that way you're going to eventually hit the fucking gold mine you exactly know? so don't be afraid to iterate i think who fuck who the fuck said that i think it was uh that disney dude uh If you're satisfied, he said. I think it's Oatly or something like that, was it? Chris Oatly? Is that the name? Fuck it. Uh but he said like sort of if you're satisfied with the design, go back and iterate. <laughs> like it's yeah. you're never going to go and reiterate and it's going to give you garbage. No. No, cuz you have something and then you just go back. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to go back, change the gender, change the body shape. If it's shit, yeah. like it's only going to Like you'll improve. you'll have to yeah exactly mm-hmm. it'll improve or you'll have to go back at a later stage yeah which is worse because right now you're still sort of like you got some good ideas but you haven't sort of put it together entirely no so it's easier to sort of not get married to the idea and go back and also use your friends and stuff like yeah. ask people and show them and that talk is about the best you know, thing because like, that's how you evolve yeah beyond your capabilities that is actually know. true and yeah. ask yourself what is the the want of this character and what is the need of this character always like, yes because i think that is a good it. what drives your character mm-hmm. like i think if we if we can compare our made up character here with cora another made up character cora wants to be sort of like because she excels at physical ability so she wants to sort of do more of that she wants to learn all the elements fast and quick and because she excels at it and but what she needs is none of that <laughs> like she needs calm she needs calm spirituality and that doesn't come easy for her so she sort of pushes it on the side and when she can't do something she gets frustrated like all of us so ask yourself like the need and want of your character or the want and need and once you have that ask yourself sort of like do people behave like this That is also things you could ask about your character. Yeah. Why is he acting like this? Because is that like some sort of sh- bullshit made up thing that no one would react to, like or react like? Hmm. Then people will read it and maybe be annoyed that your character is making some stupid. It's like uh, scary movies. Hmm. The people are like, oh, I'll just go check out who murdered these 15 people. No, <laughs> you don't go into a dark room. <laughs> With like a flashlight that sort of covers, you know, like a fraction of a room, <laughs> barely. Yeah. You you wouldn't sort of do that into a person with in, like a character with integrity, you know, no. like you wouldn't sort of like a. So try to ask yourself: Is my character's behavior sort of reasonable? Reasonable, mm-hmm. yeah, in the way. And then they can have stuff that they do that is unreasonable. Like I'm the Living Dead, but I love hamburgers. Yeah. Because that's just. A thing that they do it's fun it's fun yeah it's something that we remember and you, know? you can do it like it doesn't make entire like it doesn't make sense but it's not big enough for us to question and it's, it's just, just like it's just a couple of panels in a four book series yeah and it stands out like it's something we really remember from those exactly books. and it's like, also good yeah we yeah. remember that's pretty much all i remember yeah i don't remember much more than that yeah yeah so Terrible. Write down everything you know about your character. Sketch that fucker out. Question your stereotypes. <laughs> Go back, iterate, and then keep nice. adding fucking <laughs> things to it. Yeah, to make it awesome, brother. And then just ship it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We didn't touch on color here, but fuck color. Yeah, color does play a part. Also, shapes do. Yeah. But we'll keep that to character design, super advanced. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, just it's super hard to cover everything. Yeah, just type in character design on YouTube, and you get fifty thousand really bad tutorials. 
and maybe uh, one or two good. Yeah, but we, we tried to find something to sort of like hand you guys, like yeah. sort of like you can go to this link. Yeah, we just couldn't find a good enough video that we thought was like this is the one. We no. don't want to send you like oh we found fifty videos that you could if you watch. Four minutes here, five minutes there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it's not something we want to do. No. Uh, so I'm going to try to sort of like, I'm still writing the, the freelance article mm. about, I'm going to give you guys a contract and some tips that you can use on the sketchbookheroes.com blog. And I'm also going to try to do one for this one and maybe record a video at like some point. Like sketching out a character or... Everything that we've said, pretty mm -hmm. much, like right the, the the initial phase of this. Yeah, the bullet points. Yeah, the bullet points, and then like a couple of things. There's tons of ways of doing this. Everyone does yeah. it differently. Yeah. Uh, depending on what you work with, like a book, then you do it differently because you write. When... Exactly, and this is a general yeah, character this is... design thing. Exactly, so... I tried to keep it a bit sort of mixed, so you could, as a writer, you could sort of yeah, you use the same approach. There are more things to think about as a writer. Yeah, uh, but still, I, I mean, think that's the... where the best characters exactly. are. I think you guys understand where we're coming from, and I think this hopefully <laughs> this helped you guys in some way. Yeah, if you're feeling lost and not really knowing how to go about creating new characters. So, yeah, yeah. here you go. Overabundance of... Of information. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll try to make an article out of this because the more you talk about it, the more you want to say, and I think... Yeah, and the more you're going to confuse people. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's better just to get... Yeah. We'll, we'll try uh, to make something for you guys to follow at some point. Yeah. Because it does take a lot of time writing this stuff down like the one about freelance contracts and how to conduct freelance and get we're paid creative people we're not supposed to write stuff <laughs> and also we do this on the side yeah so it does take up a lot of like when i say a lot of time anything is a lot of time right now and, and this is Elias <laughs> doing all of this so i'm just standing here feeling guilty uh, but also feeling good <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but remember at least those tips uh, avoid the stereotypes, question your characters, reiterate them, do what the fuck you want, and then show us. Yes. Uh, either tag us on Instagram at Sketchbook Heroes. Or send us fan mail. Yes, fan mail. Or reach out on sketchbookheroes.com. There is a comment section straight on the first landing page. Use it. Hit us up. Yeah. Tell us what you think about the episode. Uh, if you find good links on character design what to think about what to not think about <laughs> yeah share it uh, share it yeah just share it in the comments so yes. that everyone can find it and if we deem it worthy we will also put it in our links section yes um yeah this episode is crazy long yeah it's gonna be long 140 140 so you want to save full metal alchemist or do you want to talk about it i think yeah let's save it Let's save it. We'll save it. Because really, I feel like the character we created was very inspired by Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, I didn't even... I actually didn't think about it, no. but I think it... Because I had it in my head the whole time. And with the whole glitching part and everything. Oh, shit. I didn't think so, about that at all. Yeah. But, oh, well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we'll dive into Full Metal Alchemist and On the next Brotherhood episode. Yeah. in the next and what? also, if you haven't seen it, it's worth watching. We can yeah. say that now, but we'll talk about it more in depth next time. Yes. Uh, but yeah, holy shit, the similarities are like we said, <laughs> nothing is original. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but and by the way, guys, if you want an assignment, we've never given you an assignment. So to all you listening, <laughs> uh, use the idea. Magical power dump. Yeah. Okay. Magical objects go to this place to be destroyed. Uh, it doesn't have to be the desert. That was just an idea. You can tweak it as however you want. I see more of a warehouse. I actually saw sort of like a cliff. Uh, fuck it. Cliff face sort of like underneath there is this mm. big thing. Uh, but and a lot of vegetation because it's fantasy for some reason. For me, that is vegetation. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's a, a, a proper city. Like. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, a normal city. I love how that is fantasy. so different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in my, it more was urban. like, it's more like 
a city, but with vegetation and more Victorian than mm-hmm. it is future anything. Yeah. Like modern. It's more. Yeah, it, this one is more modern day. Oh, okay, head. okay. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. So we're not going to confuse you even more now? No, no, no. But, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, use the, the, the magical power dump station. Yeah. <laughs> we're sticking with that. Yeah. And this character with this character the... yeah originates from here hmm. like you, the character the the nameless genderless thing is born in this place or created or whatever the fuck it is and has a crushed arm and an injured leg in some way and creates a prosthetic arm out of magical junk and a leg yeah from there on, you're free. Go. I'm going to actually try this one myself. Uh, I yeah. actually like okay, it. Okay, yeah. Then I'm going to have to do it myself too. <laughs> I'm going to name this character, and this character's name is Vague. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is actually pretty yeah? funny. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go with Vague. Okay? So me and Robert are going to try to design Vague. And, and I guess... Yeah, we're challenging uh, everybody else. So... We have one week, so yeah, I would say we'll until post, next episode. Uh, yeah, so everyone, uh, hashtag vague two seventeen maybe, and sketchbook heroes. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Just tag us. Yeah. Tag Just us. fucking tag us on the vague one. Yeah. There will be no prize for this one. This is just. But we'll all join in. Yeah. And see fun. what we can sort of do with it. Mm-hmm. So what you have is. Power station dump thingy <laughs> place. Magical power station dump. Magical power station dump. In God a fantasy world. In a okay. fantasy setting with a prosthetic magical arm made out of junk and a leg. And the character's name is Vague. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. There I actually go. just love this character yeah. already. I don't even know. And remember, we're avoiding stereotypes. Yeah. Or you just try to put all the stereotypes into one. Exactly. If you're doing stereotypes, make them proper stereotypes. <laughs> exactly. Like, big uh, boobs and ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Titty armor. Uh, <laughs> Titty armor. <laughs> oh, fucking retarded. Yes. Yeah. And if we offended someone, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, bitch about it on sketchbookheroes.com. <laughs> Don't forget to bring your purse. Yeah. We're out. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, guys. We love you. See you next week. And... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Offend everyone at the end when no one's listening. Exactly. Yeah, we love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And Good luck drawing vague. Vague. <laughs> we want to see some vague drawings when you're done. Fuck yeah. Cool. <laughs> <All right. laughs>